156 Travis Scott songs, and I'll be ranking every single one in this video. Travis motherfucking Scott, the greatest live performer on this planet. Travis Scott has been one of the biggest superstars in the past decade, gaining a reputation as one of the greatest live performers of all time. He's completely shifted hip hop with one of, if not the greatest trap album ever with Rodeo, as well as having major success with the atmosphere of albums like Astroworld. And even if you're unfamiliar with his music, you've likely encountered his name due to his portfolio beyond the music industry by involving himself in various endorsement deals throughout his career, with the most notable being the guy from Fortnite. Today, I'll be ranking every Travis Scott song he's ever released, so not just on all platforms. This is the full list of everything I'll be including and leaving out. I'll be including anything ever released from 2012 and up. Producer collabs and collab releases are included as long as I feel Travis contributed enough to the songs. And I won't be including any features, leaks, or remixes. If you're new to the channel, I'll be animating his discography in sections. There'll be songs I consider bad, mid, good, great, and eventually perfect, with each having their own set Section representing a theme and the tracks on the list, all while giving a deep dive into his discography. As a lot of you know, I was never a big Travis Scott fan. In fact, he wasn't even on my board for my favorite artists until this video. I approach his music completely blind by never finishing an entire Travis Scott album beforehand. I'm aware you might have your own thoughts and opinions, so feel free to share those comments down below and I'll try my best to get back to you. But now to the list. At dead last, we have Chaz interlude. What is this beat? It sounds like some Nintendo type shit. And yes, it's an interlude, but how could Travis's mixing be this awful? I couldn't even understand one word. Also, Chaz is referring to Toro Rima's real name. Fish, grits. Never seen it. fish and grits. The piano on this beat sounds so lazy. I can tell no one put any effort on this track. Secured, secured. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's secured. Who would have known a collaboration between Nas and Travis was going to happen? Only to find the track to be corny with a bland and empty chorus. But fortunately, we can make a realistic excuse and blame everything on DJ Khaled. Kitty. It's a silly song where all the artists rap about Kitty Meow Meow and how they got money while still being in the streets. Up. Casey Veggies referred to Travis as XX in a verse. The nickname XX is something Travis and his crew used to refer themselves as. When asked on Tumblr, he explained it stands for never let yourself get label, known as a label. You are who you want to be. XX is even still at the end of Trav's Twitter handle. Back, back, when you see me, you can fall back, when you see me, you can back was released as a bonus track on days before rodeo travis had it for almost four years to that point because it was a classmate song he scrapped the other members part and re-recorded the verse in 2012 while making al pharaoh but ended up scrapping it again then on days before rodeo he re-recorded some lines redid the ad libs and adjusted the beat which was the fifth edit to this point and it's still ass yeah i know nah, nah, i know yeah 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 that bitch crazy that bitch crazy. First solo song that Travis released. The video was released to various blogs in 2011 and eventually was released to YouTube in 2012. The song was intended for the project Owl Pharaoh, but ended up not making the cut. Old English was dropped by Travis and eventually was a track on King Chip's album in 2014. Some say it's a fan favorite, which I'd assume is because of the hook, but that's actually why I have the song so low. For me, it sounds like a song for a cult and the cover art makes me think that even more. Like the group of people with pointy hoods bowing down, I'm not risking getting demonetized, but I'm sure you know what I'm referring to. Meadow Creek. The opening to Owl Pharaoh has a very interesting theme divided into four parts, even though the track is only only two minutes. It's an interesting concept for sure, but for the most part, the song is pretty unlistenable to the ear. Right, now look what we did. Now the cops behind us. Sin City. The concept for the song is not about the city of Las Vegas, which goes by Sin City, but rather about a fictional city in which one has to commit sins in order to advance in its hierarchy. The city is meant to be an analogy for modern America. Not a bad concept, but a bad song overall. The song contains a sample of Rick James' Mary Jane. Ring Ring. Chase B is a DJ and music producer, most well known as being Travis Scott's tour DJ. 
They're both longtime friends, and Chase B is part of Travis's Cactus Jack label. They even have a radio show together with two seasons featuring celebrities called Dot Wave Radio. I wasn't a fan of the production, and it sounded forced, so that's why I have it here. The song's only three minutes, and it feels like a race to the finish, just waiting for the track to be over. Token. Travis sings in Spanish for a little bit. Doesn't mean the lyrics are good. I love a lot of Latin music, but Rosalia and Travis ain't it. High Fashion. Originally rumored to be one of the first singles from Rodeo, but ended up not making the album, which was a good thing. God country, this is war. God's country. Goofy sample. Sounds like Mort from Madagascar. Also, this has one of the most generic flows from Travis from his catalog. Not a fan for real. Behave, us niggas, we can't behave. We on the page. Piss on your grave. The track was originally for Kanye's album The Life of Pablo, but ended up on Rodeo. In my opinion, it's the only miss on Rodeo. This was my first time hearing this song, and it fucking sucks. I can imagine there'll be supporters over this song, but I'm curious if they would still like it if it was wasn't Kanye singing that whack ass hook. K-pop, very disappointing, especially for having Travis, Bad Bunny, and The Weeknd all in the same track. This is just a Bad Bunny song and it isn't any good. Also, the track is called K-pop because it refers to a drug called ketamine pop, which is quite literally what it sounds like. A ketamine laced lollipop. And apparently The Weeknd likes to get high off that, I guess. Nothing but net. It should have been a Travis and Party Next Door song, but Travis played it in the studio with Young Thug and gave it a new life. Young Thug originally wanted it for slime season, but ended up not doing so. Eye to eye. Extremely weak hook from Quavo. He had a decent verse, but his verse is probably the only thing I can say highly about this track. Best man. Quavo and Travis strongly talk about their bonds with their friends, their dedication to their craft, and their recognition of the importance of loyalty and the support in their journey towards success. Good message, just not memorable. Naked. Very whack intro with a distorted bony bear on the chorus. Travis had a decent short verse, talking about wanting him to go away from this place since he doesn't fit in. Quitana. The only praise I can give this is for the fact that it was the commercial debut for Owl Pharaoh. I know people enjoyed it live during that 2013-14 era, but I didn't like it too much. You gotta start somewhere, I guess. That's every song for the bad section. Now will be a step up with tracks I consider mid. Saint. Everything about this track is pretty boring. Flip, Motorcycle Patches, Trav's favorite song off the album, which he stated before performing it live for the first time. This is my favorite song on the album. What we can Motorcycle Patches. Go up a level. Dreamcatcher describes a night out for Travis Scott and Sway Lee. They both try to entice a girl into coming home with them, claiming, I know what you're into. The tile suggests they not only know what girls dream of, but can make their desires a reality. I'm fine. Kanye is already on this Sci High album, but he would have fit really well on this gospel track as well. Only one. Reddit users were comparing this to 808 and Heartbreaks, which is far from it. I understand where Metro and Travis were trying to go, but I shouldn't hate on it too much, since it's just an interlude. Go. Little Uzi Vert also uses beat for an unreleased song called Harden, and as a biased Uzi fan, it's much better. Oh, yeah. Drive. Travis and James Fonleroy really love driving under the influence. Celebrate. Like I said in my juice ranking, Post Malone can be a hit or miss, and he's definitely a miss on this song. It's a DJ Khaled song, so obviously it's corny. Congratulations, better. No. Modern Slavery, the intro track to the collab project between Trav and Quavo. The duo draws parallels between slavery that occurred in America hundreds of years ago and the notion that they are now enslaved to their life's luxuries. On everything. The hook from Travis is explaining his lifestyle will never end. Rick Ross flexes about his supreme underwear. No name, supreme underwear in like Big Sean's the biggest highlight, which he responds to the disses Kendrick Lamar threw at him with Humble and the Heart Part 4. Did I mention this song's by DJ Khaled? If only I could Prayers up. Trav's straight up ad lib has gone pop friendly. Topia twins. Twin bitches hopping off the jet ski. That's the hook. Really? 21 carried. 
yeah. zombies. In June 2013, Travis signed an endorsement deal with Reebok, which he was repping from 2013 to 14. There's a lyric that reads, you know Reebok keep La feet hot. They'd be shipping package GL600 or The Palace that collab with classics. Zombies was something commonly I heard as fans' least favorite song through his projects, which I'd assume is from the cultist chant throughout the hook that's sort of similar to the song Old English from 2012. I don't think it's bad nor good. Yeah. Hooch. Hooch is a slang term for homemade alcohol, but knowing Travis, it's more likely referring to lean, especially explaining hooch juice throughout the track. Where are you from? Although both artists are not directly affiliated with a gang, there are indications in the lyrics that they have connections with them. If Quavo or Travis catch a case, bruh, you just gotta hope they don't use these lyrics in court like they're doing to Young Thug. Or Young, truly humble under God, I should say. Flocky Flocky. A decent guitar beat with cool little looping synths. Don carried the song with his vocals and ad-libs. Trav's verse was pretty average. Gray. I like this song with my first listen, but the more and more I re-listen to his discography, the more this song falls down for me. Sometimes, but that ass on don't quit. Travis Scott and Calvin Harris don't really work well together. The mixing for Travis doesn't sound good either, which I'm seeing as a common theme with every song by DJ Khaled. So gifted, tripping, I'm constantly falling. MIA. The first verse was taken from Travis's freestyle for the 2013 XXL magazine, and the second verse was from the official 2013 XXL cipher with three other artists, with one being Joey Badass. Big stench. Do rag activity on Spotify, Trav's verse goes first and then Keem's, but on YouTube, it's the other way around for whatever reason. And just a personal hot take I think Baby Keem is one of the most overrated rappers to come out in the last five years. Baby Keem's peak was his old Minecraft YouTube channel in 2013. Hey, Beast, it's all my mods here, and uh, I'm gonna be doing a review of the better sprinting mod. Got a day to day to stack it, still I pay accounts. 20 racks to show Wasted. Travis's performance is actually decent, but Juicy J's feature was maybe unnecessary. Young Lean was originally featured on the track as well as King Cruel, but Travis cut both off the song, mainly because Juicy J had access to a sample that Travis wanted to use, which was Pimp C's Having Things 06. Basement Freestyle. The title is reminiscent of Kendrick Lamar's backseat freestyle from Good Kid Mad City. Both tracks hold similar themes, with Basement Freestyle holding way less quality than Kendrick's. Why is it? You need some guidance. Guidance has a distinct dancehall vibe, and one of the few songs about failed relationships on the album Birds in the Trap. My white tea. Williams. Franchise ended up going number one on Billboard. The track got previewed in the Travis Scott and McDonald's commercial. Travis Scott, this is my McDonald's order. Follow me. There was also a McDonald's and Travis Scott merchandise collaboration, and a select people who purchased merchandise received early access to franchise prior to its release. How you feel? Just another song from Huncho Jack. It ain't that special. The beat and chorus can be a bit catchy though. Phone is money can make a not how not. Moon Rock. Moon Rock refers to cannabis buds, basically drugs that look like rocks. The song is kind of simple, and Quavo slightly carried. Black where the hips go, everybody here choking. XX. I explained what XX meant under the song Up, so I won't again. It's basically just an old nickname for Travis and his crew, so we had a song title after it. Shorty, I'll be flying high. Flying High, a lot better than Chaz interlude. Flying High is about being high on drugs. Pretty easy to figure that out. I can't do no like Sweet, sweet. Might be one of my most controversial rankings on this entire list. I saw some fans praising it online and it's just not for me. Not something I'd play if it came on. Anti-social, random ass collab with Ed Sheeran. Travis was kind of going off though. And the unexpected high pitched vocals with his auto tune was cool. The plan. I didn't know Travis could use even more autotune than he already uses. This is for the movie Tenant. Might have sounded fire in theaters. Lost on Alice, driven in both cars. Just bring Lost Forever. Was a part of the original Utopia leaks from 2020 to 22. It has been a leak on YouTube for like a year at this point, and it still made the album. The song is nice until West Side Gun starts speaking. Travis also used this song at his Dior Runaway show. I'm just one angel away from blocking out the devil. Bust it down, she talking body language. It's 
In C17, the beat is sort of like a preview to how tracks like I Know, Schizo, and Lost Forever would sound like in the future. The biggest complaint is that 21 Savage has a pretty mediocre and quiet delivery on this track, and it kind of kills the vibe that Travis has already set. And afterwards, everything about this track just slows down and mellows out. All is link up. All ain't no days off. A Team. Travis executive produced the soundtrack for NBA 2K19. He had five songs featured in the game Antidote, Sweet Sweet, Stargazing, Sicko Mode, and A Team. He was also featured on two songs on the soundtrack. Limited edition Travis Scott covers were given to a select people who attended ComplexCon 2018. Travis was also professionally scanned into the game. They used a scan for the neighborhood trailer and his shows were implemented into the game. LeBron James even interviewed him about what the game. What does it mean for you to be the executive producer of the greatest basketball game in the world? It's an honor. You know what? We grew on. Lose. Headlines or celebrity gossip sites claim that Travis removed Rihanna from this record due to their breakup, which was likely on this track, replacing her with Cassie. However, this is unconfirmed. Impossible. Critics praise this song as one of the best Travis songs because of the writing, the dark, eerie sounds, and for the placement in the track list of Rodeo. On the song, he says that he's close to a person that he has issues with, but he can't fix them, and the other person doesn't want to fix them either. It's a lost relationship slash friendship that he just wants to get back. I personally thought of this track not to be as replayable compared to the other songs on Rodeo, so that's why I have it so low. The rap war turned into a rover. Never Catch Me. This song was first premiered at Travis's rodeo tour on March 12, 2015 in New York, where Travis Scott revealed that this song would be the 16th and final track on the deluxe edition of Rodeo. St. Laurent Mask. Just a few days prior to the release of the album, Travis collaborated with St. Laurent to release a limited edition vinyl record. When Scott promoted the collab on Instagram, he wrote the title of the song as the caption of one of his posts. Travis also starred in the brand's promotional video for their 2017 spring collection. Every one of those songs I just named, I consider mid, which means they're listenable, but not something I'd play frequently. But from here on now, the rest of the rankings are at least good. Go Off. This was the lead single to the eighth installment to the Fast and Furious series. Some say it's very corny, but that's kind of expected. It sounds like a theme song, and the artist definitely made this while sober. And as a Uzi fan, he had the best verse. He was also channeling his inner Miley Cyrus with the wrecking ball in the music video. Black and Chinese. It's what you expect. The title serves as a little homage to the women they like. This is mostly Jivo's type as well. Dubai shit. This whole album is just talking about their lavish lifestyles. It's hard to explain some of these tracks because it's literally every song. Even Black and Chinese was flexing. Embarrass. Very nice and mellow vibes from Don Tolliver and Travis. Sounds even better when it's slowed down with reverb. No, no better. Travis has very commonly had a lot of remixes for his songs, and this track has an entire EP of just remixes, which is absurd. Whole lot of lovin'. This sounds like a beat that was meant for Justin Bieber or Chris Brown, but was accidentally sent to Travis. He thought this pop song was going to be one of his biggest songs because of the big quantity of remixes he published, but fans hated it and labeled it as one of the worst attempts at being experimental. Okay. Gotti. This is basically a pop smoke song. Travis has a forgettable and mediocre verse, and he doesn't exactly match with a drill beat, unlike pop smoke. Down in, Atlanta. Down in Atlanta. An amazing beat from Pharrell Williams. But honestly, Travis' performance on this track sounds a little rush. And then we burn the town. We both was cut, yeah. Wake up. The weekend is horny. Who would have guessed? Gang Gang. Jack Boys charted at number one on the Billboard Hot 100, which became the first number one album of the 2020s. I like Don Tolliver in this song, and there's an absurd amount of cars in this music video, with one being the 1988 BMW E30 M3, which was bought and customized for the Cactus Jack brand. The car was shown in the Jack Boys short film, the Gang Gang music video, and as well as the Jack Boys album cover. The car was later put on auction with the earnings going to charity. Travis Scott even collaborated with Hot Wheels, where the car was made as a limited edition piece, as well as a shirt with the Hot Wheels, Travis Scott, and the custom BMW imprint. Circus Maximus. So it's just a slightly mediocre version of Black Skinhead by Kanye. Let's go. 
We sit at hype outside. The Scots. On April 21, 2020, the Fortnite item shop was updated with a collaboration with Travis Scott. You had two skins with back blings, dances, a pickaxe, and a weapon skin. And they placed Astroworld entrance heads around the Fortnite map. Two days later, there was a Fortnite event that had Travis Scott performing. The songs performed were some of his biggest tracks alongside the Scots that was previewed for the first time. 27 million people participated in the event in the first five days. Travis uploaded the event to YouTube and has over 200 million views. That's fucking crazy. Fortnite released merchandise with Travis Scott with clothing, action figures, as well as Fortnite Nerf guns. The Scots was also supposed to be the first single for Trav and Kid Cudi's collab album, but it was scrapped. The song ended up going number one on Billboard. You know my diamonds. Ra Ra. On the evening of Birds in the Trap's release, Ra Ra with Lil Uzi Vert was put on SoundCloud. Ra Ra marked the first collaboration with Trav and Uzi. The cover art for the song was from a car crash that happened less than three weeks before the song's release. Hold that heat. Trav's first release since the Astroworld Festival tragedy. Because of this unfortunate event, it implied that it needed to be postponed for good reason. <laughs> What to do, drugs and sex life, that's all. Uh -oh, I know you lied. Modern Jam. Originally, the beat was used for I Am God by Kanye West and Yeezus. Ye scrapped the beat and Travis picked it up to give it a second life. I'm not huge on Tizo Touchdown, but the people that do like him, I can see loving this song. Mafia. This was one of the first singles alongside Escape Plan that was going to be on Utopia. On the first cover of the song pack, the date under the fake newspaper reads 23rd June and hinted at a secondary album alongside Utopia called Dystopia. June 23rd arrived three three times with no album. I actually think Travis was planning to drop Utopia on June 23rd, 2023, but I think the only reason why he delayed it a couple of weeks was because of Uzi's pink tape. Travis obviously beat Uzi in sales, but I'm sure they didn't want any competition in the media. Almost all the songs scrapped on Dystopia are now leaked on YouTube or bought on Discord servers. Been outside, not going in. Hope you had outside Travis and 21 Savage's first collab in the song Travis and 21 talk about their A-team and that's about it and I need more thighs, yeah. we on a jet quest. who what Travis did a great job on the chorus and the verse the only complaint is Quavo and Takeoff's performance on the song and maybe have a longer verse and not a 15 second little verse still overall a good song One time we can run. Some we the London. The song was first previewed at Young Thug's performance at Rolling Loud. Young Thug also teased the song on a live stream titled Meet Me at the London. The stream showed a woman painting a spider on a green canvas, foreshadowing its release. The woman also showed a cactus shaped pinata hinting at Travis. The stream has since been deleted. You can still find a demo version with an extended Travis verse online. Take one down and hit my peak. Overdue. This is probably one of Travis's more laid back tracks. Would be a nice listen while studying or just being your own thoughts. The song samples the Berlin breakdown version of Antonio by Annie from the 2014 film The Guest. Upper Echelon, Travis Scott's commercial debut single. The original song featured both T.I. and 2 Chains, but the one that got released didn't include the verse from 2 Chains. The song is also iconic for being included in Grand Theft Auto 5 under the radio station Radio Los Santos. Chorus, a DJ Khaled track this high? Well, that's because this was already a Travis song. I much prefer the solo track rather than the release version with DJ Khaled's annoying ad libs with the added Lil Wayne feature. Raindrops. On physical versions of Heroes and Villains, a version of this track has slightly altered lyrics and vocal mixing can be heard. 16 Chapels. Originally was not included in Al Farrell when it was released, but then the song was later added by Travis. The influence from Kid Cudi is definitely noticeable in this track. Till further notice, Travis uses the track to close out Utopia's narrative of finding inner peace and balance within yourself. He reflects on both the highest of highs and the lowest of lows on the five-year absence from music. Travis asks the listeners where they will go when they're finished with him and tells the listeners to be on the lookout for what is yet to come in the future. All through, coming through deep. Hey man, only knew this from Madden 18. Backyard. At the beginning of the song, you can hear Travis eating from a bag of chips. In 2018, a fan asked what type of chips he was eating, and Travis replied, sour cream and onion lays. And go straight to the moon. Dance on the Moon. This attempt at a more EDM trap type beat that ended up being more enjoyable for some people, but not for others. 
You ain't on time, you are late. First take, Travis and Bryson Taylor detail a woman or multiple women only interested in their money, despite their love for them going much deeper than material wealth. Also, I saw a lot of hate on the song online, and I can't understand that because I really enjoy the track. 5% tint. The iconic sample was from Self Therapy by Goody Mob. The song for some period became one of the fastest streaming songs in mid-2021 because of TikTok trends. It went from 150 million streams to 320 million streams in just four months. Also, in the first few lyrics, there was a debate about what Travis said in the phrase, don't come out, I got the info, but some hear M4 instead. In the unofficial music videos of the song lyrics, they're going to be, don't come out, I got the M4. But in the official lyrics on Genius, Apple Music, and Spotify, it says info. Yosemite. The exact day that this song dropped on Astroworld, Nav's outro verse to the song was really low volume. A bunch of memes came out of it, and people made fun of the song for that reason. Then shortly after, the mix was fixed and more polished, fixing the problem. Meltdown. Drake disses Pharrell Williams and Pusha T on the track. Very sassy. Star Wars laser blasts were also used throughout the track. OK All Right, two part song where OK is more trap and All Right is more psychedelic, which includes a non credit feature from SZA. I enjoyed the second half way more, and if it was just that half, I would put it in high grade, maybe even perfect. Hyena. There's multiple samples on this track, with the most important samples being from Proclamation by Gentle Giant for the intro of Utopia as well as a track from 1969 called Cigarettes Sir Cigarettes for the first beat of the track. Don't play. I really like Travis's flow and rapping on this track, plus the content beat switches towards the later half of the song combined with a fire verse from Big Sean and beautiful synth keys from the 1975 makes the track even better. Coordinate. Travis highlights his nightlife and his day to day, basically just rock star shit. And Coordinate's beat samples Bossed Up by Juicy J and Wiz Khalifa. Swang Remix. Travis remixed an iconic song from Ray Stremmerd. And Travis ad libs fit so well on this beat. I said no remixes, but come on, this is like a Travis song to this point. Uptown. XXX Tentacion also recorded on this beat in an unreleased song called OK I'm Turned. Green and Purple. Has a hard hitting bass with cool funky synths complementing the beat. It's a really good song to play at parties or in the car. There are many fan made visualizers and edits made to the audio online with the obsession over Playboy Cardi. There's a line in one of the verses where Travis says help her tie this, but most of the fans misheard the lyric and thought he said hepatitis. Huncho yeah, Jack. Nah, cause this song is extremely underrated. The beat, the flows, the production, everything was really good. It's 5 a.m. looking like noon. I took a ride out of the saloon bar. Houston and Fornication. June 2018, a lengthy high quality snippet of the song was leaked online. Later in July, Music Mafia put the song up for sale on their website. Regardless, the song was updated and included on the album anyways. Now, while all those songs I just named were good songs, we're now diving into the body of tracks I consider great. I, mean, she still love it's 5 and I'm drunk right now. I know. Should have been replaced by Escape Plan on the Utopia track list, but Mike Dean said it had the potential to be the biggest fumble of Travis's career. It's currently the most dream song off Utopia, and I think it's slightly overrated. <laughs> Il Resto echoes. Beyonce's rapping is weird, but actually good. The track has a house fuse bouncy tone and a gaining R&B effect with the addition of Bon Iver's vocals. Back when Travis and Kylie Jenner lived together in Los Angeles, the road where they were staying at was called Doresto Drive. The sample was used from the 2013 game It'll Do. Blocka La Flame. This early track is where Travis got one of his nicknames La Flame, which he uses as an ad lib frequently, and even had a short documentary in 2016 titled La Flame. The track also has production credits from Young Chop, who's responsible for a lot of 2012 iconic Chief Keep Trap drill tracks such as Love Sosa, I Don't Like, and Hate Being Sober. Travis had a lethal Houston flow, which was refreshing to hear since it wasn't the usual iconic autotune flow he normally does. The chopped and screwed flow that he has really allows this track to shine. Juice. 
man, I might fuck around, lose my mind. I got the prayer. I love the super eerie, slow, creepy piano keys, all the way from the dark, godlike outro by Travis. Amazing way to start days before rodeo. <laughs> Quatana Part 2, a much better song than the prequel. This time, T.I. teams up with Travis to create the sequel. But for some reason, T.I.'s feature is uncredited, unlike others on Days Before Rodeo. Love with three O's. The first beat and hook of the song was made in 2014. Travis laid several verses over this beat, around seven to eight full verses. One day, he was in the studio with Kid Cudi and played it. Cudi loved it so much that he wanted it on his album, so he recorded a verse on it. Cudi wanted it on Man on the Moon 3, but Travis never sent it and published it on Utopia. Pray for love. This was the first time Travis and The Weeknd collaborated on a song. It sounds like The Weeknd had the same mixing preset as Travis, which was very weird, but kind of cool at the same time. Earlier to the release of Rodeo, a leaked version of the song contained Weeknd lyrics that eventually ended up on his own song called Tell Your Friends. Skyfall. According to Travis, this song is about old artists falling off and losing the ability to connect with the new generation. Metro Boomin also worked on this song. Hey, shoddy, hey, darling, hey. Out West. The biggest song off Jack Boys. Out West became a massive trend on TikTok in 2020, even leading to the dance being added to Fortnite. You wanna ride to a wonderful Fortnite. time. Wonderful. Travis and The Weeknd are enjoying living in the moment and living life to the fullest. The Weeknd is still very horny in the track, obviously. This one for the fuck fake. Bad Mood Shit On You. It's a two-part song that addresses different themes and emotions. In the first part, Bad Mood, the lyrics delve into a sense of rebellion, frustration, and dissatisfaction with societal norms. The second part, Shit On You, continues with a similar rebellious tone, addressing the presence of fake individuals who spread negativity and hate. Escape plan. People really like Mafia more. Now this shit's way harder. Much money out here. R.I.P. Screw. DJ Screw passed away from a codeine overdose in the year 2000. He was responsible for mastering the develop of the chopped and screwed mixing technique, which helped pioneer the Houston hip hop scene. Travis dedicated this track to him with help from the relaxing Sway Lee vocals. <laughs> Schizo. This song is one of the most versatile Travis songs. It has included four beat switches and a Young Thug verse. Travis created this song in the sessions of Franchise. It got changed multiple times in the process. Nina. Honestly gives me Days Before Rodeo vibes. Can't Say. The song that made Don Tolliver the artist who he is today. And it's a great start to the Travis and Don duo. Sirens. I love the looping of the lookout ad lib used in the outro. Reminds me of the Super Mario 64 staircase glitch. Animal. T.I. freestyled his verse on a radio show for Travis. This track only has 240,000 views on YouTube and it's extremely underrated. So if you haven't heard it, I really recommend listening because it got me addicted. Paracel. Honestly, such an introspective and calming track to me. Paracel is one of the weirdest ideas for a song that I could imagine, but that's kind of why I like it. Dave Chappelle is reciting a poem about forgiveness on top of a Dave Bixby sample, paired with distorted vocals from Young Lean. It's only two and a half minutes long, and it's not a song from the Astroworld era that Travis could ever make. Not even something he would ever make, but that's why it's so fitting for Utopia. Plus, Dave Chappelle's poem about forgiveness is such a fitting parallel to the Astroworld tragedies that happened in 2021. I she got it, she got it. Sloppy Toppy. All of these amazing young gentlemen are expressing their love and appreciation for Top from the opposite gender. By the way, those sirens when Quavo starts rapping is so tough. SDP Interlude. It's a literal acid trip. SDP Interlude has a second version that's not released with the same beat, which has extended lyrics and new synths in the background. The extended version is a fan classic, and a lot of people label it as a top 10 Travis song. Like, the extended version literally has 34 million views on YouTube, while the actual audio only has 15 million. Bicentennial man. No bystanders. There's actually a video of Travis recording the song. As well as his reaction to it being mixed. Juice World is using the hook saying, The Party Never Ends, which will be the title of his last album. The sample comes from Bjork's Yoga. Brown and drugs. We both 
This song is the intro of Rodeo. The intro and as well as the album is narrated by the rapper T.I. Overall, the track is about Travis's self-destructive lifestyle, fueled by drugs and sex. While he recognizes the darkness of his lifestyle, he is unable or unwilling to change and instead revels in the fantasy of being a wild and untamed outlaw. Lights Love Sick. Travis wrote, produced, and edited the song and music video in 2012. The hook was inspired by Kanye's flashing lights. T.I. and Kanye West eventually found this track, both of some of Travis's biggest influences. T.I. found strong interest in Travis as well as Kanye. Many people credit T.I. for starting Travis's career by mentoring him and being the first to sign him. Only you can stand my mind. The ends. Travis and Andre 3000 rap about the harsh realities of growing up in poverty and violence. It speaks to the need to be true to oneself, pursue one's passions, and look out for the ones that are loyal. Don't worry, I'll be back for you. All the money and cars, triple hoes in the tech. Coffee Bean. Travis Scott reflects on the journey that he's been through to get where he is now. But only this time, instead of reflecting on the journey of his come up like in Rodeo, he reflects on everything that has happened up until Astroworld's release. With him having Stormy with Kylie Jenner, him being nominated at the Grammys and losing, as well as the overall wealth and huge lavish lifestyle he is now living because of one album. Day and night. Through the late night, Kid Cudi was on Birds in the Trap two times. Cudi is Travis's idol and is the whole reason why he named himself Travis Scott since Scott is Cudi's first name. Travis even starts his verse on the track with lines from Cudi's breakout song Day and Night. Day and night. I toss and turn. Travis also had an interesting line reading, Stroke my cactus, which started a bunch of memes online. Carousel. Frank Ocean didn't want his verse in the final product, but ended up being on the song anyway. Bro literally overthinks everything. Just drop the album, bro. This also uses a Beastie Boys sample. Fiend. Travis broke a Guinness World Record when he performed Goosebumps 14 times at a 2017 show in Oklahoma City, beating out Kanye West and Jay-Z performing Fellas in Paris 11 times in a row in Paris. Later on, Travis broke his own record by performing Goosebumps 15 times at another show. Then at SoFi Stadium, he allegedly performed Fiend 15 times. He wasn't playing the full song all 15 times, but that's still insane, bro. I truly think this song will be bigger than what it is now. A true mosh pit anthem for years to come. Also, I was hyped and confused hearing this for the first time. For the reason of not knowing if it was Playboy Cardi on the track or not, since it was the first introduction to his low voice. I can tell about the night tales and all the dry wheels and all the long road. I can tell. Surprisingly, the repetitive hook works for me. If you haven't bumped this in the car, you need to. It's fucking crazy. The second verse is definitely a highlight as well. Guys. Highest in the room. Kylie Jenner was the first person who teased this song via Instagram that was advertising an eyebrow cosmetic product. Travis previewed this song three times at shows before releasing it, and it ended up going number one on Billboard. There was also a remix with Rosalia and Little Baby on Jack Boys, which fucking sucks. Yeah, yeah. Never will I cheat on you. Pick up the phone. Young Thug first previewed this track in March of 2016. The song was originally a collab with Young Thug and Stara. Stara sang the chorus instead of Travis. And then I call your whore. Travis was in the studio when Thug made the song, and Travis wrote the bridge that Young Thug sings. Travis started previewing his own version at clubs. He said that this was his song, and it was the lead single for his album, without notifying Thugger. Trav ended up leaking the song on SoundCloud because his label wouldn't release it. Then a couple days later, an agreement was set with both labels, and it became a joint release on all platforms. The single is now part of Birds in the Trap, as well as Young Thug's album Jeffrey. Quavo had a line in this track that reads, Birds in the Trap sign Brian McKnight. In an interview, Travis stated that this line inspired the name for his album. Oh, that's a small Watch. Easily one of the most underrated songs of all time, and that goes for Kanye and Uzi fans as well. The cover art shows an Astroworld theme, and even the intro was from a kid saying Astroworld from the original 1968 to 2005 Astroworld Amusement Park in Houston. <laughs> the, the song was never on the final album, and there was a segment at the end of the track with Kylie Jenner. Skeletons. This song has The Weeknd as a feature, Pharrell and Tame Impala production, and Kanye with writing credits. And it's only two minutes. This just shows the great work put into this whole album. Jolly Rancher in, make it sweeter. 
Versace my clothes, a widow. Biebs in the Trap. The title of the song is a misspelled abbreviation of Justin Bieber, who Nav uses to describe the white color of cocaine, and even name drops Bieber in the first verse. This reminds me of Young Thug's halftime, but instead he was talking about his former girlfriend Selena Gomez. Hey, cocaine white like Justin Bieber, bitch. Extra, you know. Mama Sita. This was Travis's first massive hit, unless you think Upper Echelon was. I like to think that Rich Homie's Quan's verse is actually future. I don't know, it just like makes me feel better. Travis at SoFi Stadium said that this was his daughter Stormy's favorite song. Stormy, you ready, baby? In 2017, he was performing the song in Arkansas when he encouraged fans to rush the stage and bypass security. I don't know if you're scared. I don't know if you're nervous. I don't know what it is. This is your last chance right now. Oh, here they come. Ray, Tyler, get it. Get it. Get it. Come it. Busy. Lost. He was arrested later that night for inciting a riot, and the mugshot went viral. Stargazing, a very great way to start off Astroworld, with multiple instruments and flow styles throughout the track. The mayor of Houston named November 18th Astroworld Day. Travis before that was given the keys of the Houston suburb of Missouri City, which is where Travis grew up, and he mentioned it in Stargazing. Got the keys into my city, now she know the rides. A year later, the mayor of Houston presented Travis Scott with the keys to Houston at one of his shows. We reached to the point of the video that from here on now, I consider the next 18 tracks as perfect. Apple Pie. I often see this as a fan favorite with a lot of Travis fans. I absolutely love the message Travis is trying to show in the song by having independence, a rejection of conformity, and a relentless pursuit of personal success. The song encourages listeners to carve their own path, remain true to themselves, and leave a lasting impact on the world. You know she live in major. Thank God. The song starts by Travis embracing the chaos of life while celebrating self-discovery and personal growth. With a mix of darkness and brightness, the song highlights the importance of living life to the fullest and finding gratitude in every moment. Like several other songs on Utopia, Thank God started out as a Kanye song that was given to Travis. Yeah. Astro Thunder. Beat got you levitating. The beat features production from the frequent collaborator Frank Dukes and Frank Ocean affiliate Vegin, while also providing Travis's first collaboration with John Mayer and Thundercat. In 2014, producer Vinyls uploaded a since deleted Instagram slash Twitter post detailing a potential collaboration between Travis and John Mayer. Antidote. This is how I and most discovered Travis Scott. Call me crazy on different occasions, kicking the cameraman off of my stages because I don't like the way he's snapping my angles. This is referring to the backlash he got for kicking a cameraman working for the festival he was performing at. Hey, 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 get your fucking nerdy ass off the stage, bro. Go. Now, you. Off. Yes, I don't know you, bro. Go, go, go. Nobody on stage, bro. Nobody on stage, bro. No disrespect. I'm an artist. Also, some leaked audio of Travis doing his raw ad libs for his music surface online, including this song. Oh my dear side. Sample for this was used in 21 Savage's iconic song, Bank Account. The original sample is from the education of Sony Carson. Telekinesis. Originally was a Kanye West track that was written by Victory Boyd as a gospel song titled Future Bounce. Then the name changed to Future Sounds. Then allegedly a third time that I couldn't find. The song was passed around by many artists and eventually ended up being Trav's song. Telekinesis would be heavily reworked to feature Future and SZA, where they create an amazing atmosphere of a track. A first kiss in the living room. That's Hell of a Night. Easily his best song from Al Faro. One of his best underrated tracks. And this is also Kylie Jenner's favorite song by Travis. In hills, deep off in the main. Butterfly Effect. An example of a butterfly effect is doing something small, like getting coffee, and it making a much larger effect, such as altering your career. My 8th grade ELA teacher explained it to our class, and I for real raised my hand and said, Travis Scott reference? I thought it was pretty clever. I don't think the teacher really appreciated that. Also, this beat was made by Murder Beats in his mom's basement somewhere in 2016, and he gave it to other rappers, such as Nicki Minaj and Quavo, but ended up taking back to gift it to Travis. So visit me. Yeah! 
I just built a castle. Way back. There's an old music video to this song that released on Trav's old YouTube channel. The video featured James Harden throughout the video, and Travis ended up unlisting the song later on, most likely due to him working with Nike, since the video featured lots of Adidas merch shown off by James Harden. The top comment on this audio reads, Hi Uzi fans, welcome to our world, which sums up clearly how I feel about this song. Since the second half of Way Back was sampled in Little Uzi's Prices, which was off his highly anticipated Eternal A Take. Uh, Thirty five hundred. This is Travis's longest song in his discography, clocking in at seven minutes and forty one seconds. The production from Metro plus the guitar synths from Mike Dean are amazingly good. Thirty five hundred was the lead single right before his second lead single, Antidote, to one of, if not the greatest trap album ever, Rodeo. Stop Trying to Be God, the most beautiful and well-produced song in his catalog. In an interview with The Vader, Mike Dean said it took a year to complete the song. First, Travis laid the vocals and every few weeks he would add one to two minutes more to the melody, and it came out to be 11 minutes with the demo. And in a studio session with the legend Stevie Wonder, he chopped the instrumentals and recorded with the harmonica. There wasn't a second to waste in this track. James Blake, Stevie Wonder, and Kid Cudi all contributed perfectly. And of course, the writing was focusing on Jesus Christ, which was amazing as well. This this type of production almost distracts you from the fact that Nav recorded his verse for Yosemite in the hallway of the studio on the same album. Sicko Mode, Travis's only diamond record. It ended up going number one on Billboard. Sway Lee and the late rapper Big Hawk also helped with the vocals on this track. And there's a video online of Travis hearing Drake's verse for the first time. Ooh, checks over strikes. <laughs> Lots of iconic reactions came from the high production and the beat switches, as well as the surprise Drake feature. Sicko Mode is responsible for lots of memes online, including the Travis Scott McDonald's trend, which came from the Travis's and McDonald's collaboration. You? you know what I'm here for. <laughs> Can I get uh, two of the, the Travi McFatty patties with uh, Sicko sauce? Can I get two? You know what I'm here for, man. Uh, anything else? <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> There's a lot of speculation that Drake's first was taking shots at Kanye as well as the late XXX Tentacion. Sicka Mode was also the only song he performed at the Super Bowl 53 halftime show with Maroon 5 and Big Boy. He even performed the song with LeBron James at one point. <laughs> Nightcrawler. I don't think I've met a Travis fan who doesn't have Nightcrawler in at least their top 15. I get those goosebumps every time. I need the Goosebumps. Travis said that he wrote the song in his bedroom at one of the darkest points in his life. Goosebumps was my most played song back in middle school, as well as One Night by Lil Yachty, so it had to be in my top five. Travis's daughter Stormy also loves this song and has performed it for her. Stormy, Stormy, Stormy. I get those goosebumps every time, yeah. You come around, yeah. You ease my mind. There's a clip online of a nine-year-old kid performing this song on stage, which has over 10 million views. The beat for Goosebumps was also sent to Drake, Future, Rihanna, Schoolboy Q, and Young Thug before Travis made the song. Drugs You Should Try It. Been loving this song since 8th grade, and the intro still gives me chills. If you never listened to Days Before Rodeo, listen to this track. This song is just as good as the first time I heard it. Trust me, I don't mind. Maria, I'm Drunk. This song has one of Thugger's best feature performances, with his amazing and catchy chorus. We also get an outstanding Justin Bieber feature, showing off Justin's best rapping verse to date. You wouldn't think Justin would work on this song, but it 100% does. Damn. Travis Scott is good friends with Justin Bieber. Travis helped promote Justin's single, What Do You Mean? And shortly after Maria I'm Drunk came out, they both performed the song at Travis Scott's rodeo release party and even crowd surfed during a performance. I just like to point out how extremely genius this track is. Maybe they were like actually intoxicated, like I'm sure, but they're rapping like they're drunk and being all sloppy, mumbling at points in the track. And it's so damn good. And the constant, 
<laughs> Makes you question if you should sing the lyrics or the ad libs. Look at my eyes, tell me your tail, do you see the road? I'm to my soul, tell me my eyes. The production and beat switch are so damn good, with the first beat sample coming from the Japanese house called Over There. Travis really makes this song complete. It's a very emotional but uplifting track. And in the second verse, Travis touches on his feelings, most importantly to the tragedies at the Astroworld Festival where 10 people lost their lives. I replay them nights and right by my side. All I can see is a city of people that ride with me. If they knew what Scotty would do to jump off a stage and save him a child, the things I created became the most weighted. I gotta find balance and keep me a smile. He continues talking about the subject and also hints at the feelings towards his ex-girlfriend Kylie Jenner with the eye color. What color are my eyes? Uh, green, sometimes yellow. So many emotions are built up with this track, and I can't agree with anyone who skips the intro to this track, because the entire song is perfect start to finish. Now for the final song. If you've watched the video all the way through, you can probably guess which song I have not said. It's... 90210. Is it bass? Yes. Is it the correct answer though? I think most would agree. The zip code 90210 is synonymous with Beverly Hills. It's a long song, almost six minutes duration time. The song is split into sections that take the listener on a cinematic journey, painting a picture of Travis's come up through his new lifestyle as a rap star living in Beverly Hills. The storyline starts with a girl Travis met in LA who will do anything for a taste of fame or fortune, even to a point where she falls into a drug-induced coma. Travis then speaks about the pursuit of fame tearing him away from his family after he dropped out of college in San Antonio. My granny called, she said, Travi, you work too hard. I'm worried you forget about me. It's an amazing, well-written story about the responsibilities and the negative aspects of chasing success and the mental and emotional price that has to be paid for becoming the hero to your own story. What happened now? My daddy happy. Mama called me up. That money coming and she let me out and made it now. It's just a perfect track, and I think a lot of people would agree. So what's your favorite Travis Scott song? Do you agree with my list? Who should I rank next? Let me know down below. I would love to give a shout out to all the diehard Travis Scott fans, as well as the peers who helped me give a deep dive into Travis' discography, which includes the research and creative process slash ideas for everything surrounding the video. And shout out all the artists, editors, and animators I collaborated with for the introduction to this video. Everyone will be linked down below. And of course, thank you all for supporting the channel. I respond to every DM on Instagram, so be sure to follow me. Goodbye.